exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we are doing how to be a badass mama. <laughs> and in the G spot that is guest spotlight, I have the beautiful, the amazing Melissa Melanero. Give it up for her. She is going to share with us, you guys, how to kill it as a mama. You guys are so familiar with her work. I don't even need to give her an intro, but she is a singer, a dancer, actress, founder of Move by Melissa, and you guys would recognize this face very well from the old Navy commercial, right, where everybody was trying to tell her and, you know, say that she looked like Kim Kardashian. No, this um, beautiful Italian <laughs> goddess over here is in our presence. She has also done uh, Making of the Band yes. and then Hit the Floor, which is when I ran back into you mm -hmm. because we have a mutual friend Taylor Page and yes. she was on the show with you and yes. I was like oh my god I keep running into you and yes. then again started seeing you all the time um with my clients Leanne oh my and Don. Don and I was like girl I gotta have you on the show I you know. have been killing it since like day one when I ran into you uh -huh. I would just kept you know, asking you again and again are you ready now are you ready now and you're like let me squeeze it in between these kids. Yes. And I was persistent. I did not stop. And you kept your word. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You're like, spicy, I'm going to tell you how to be a badass mama. Don't worry. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my God. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And this is amazing, by the way. Everything that I've been watching you do mm -hmm. these past few years has been absolutely amazing. You're and so cry. inspiring. And, yeah, we've known each other for so long. So I love seeing, you know, women like yourself step into the, the mm -hmm. light and their greatness and you look so gorgeous oh, tell me more i didn't hear you i'm sorry what'd you say <laughs> <laughs> no you're killing it she's killing it y'all thank you okay it. and we are here for melissa melissa's hyping me up you guys yes. um melissa we are gonna start because people want to like find out so yes. much about who you are and how you do it all yes. so before you start telling us how you are a badass mama mm -hmm. you're gonna share when did you first fall in love with yourself okay i love this question because it's hard, first of all. <laughs> I don't really like even know how to properly answer this. But um, when did I first fall in love with myself? I feel like I've always had love for myself. I feel like when I really stepped into that like badass woman love for myself was like after I had the babies. Mm. There is a new appreciation and a fire that's ignited inside of you, mm. I feel like, after you give birth. After you give birth, you're like, I can fucking do anything. I can Period. do it all. <laughs> Period. No, but it, it's, I had that, like, feeling. Like, I really got that feeling because it's so, I was, first of all, so scared mm. to give birth. So scared. You and um, me, girl. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. And, like, my mom, she had my brother and I a C-section, cesarean. And mm. forever, for so long, she's like, "That you're going to have to have it that way because that's how I had it. Like, already putting that on uh -uh. me. I'm like, I rebuke that in the name I of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, no, mom. Like, I can have my own birth story and birth moment. Um, so yeah, I was able to deliver naturally, obviously with drugs, uh, don't, get, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Epidural. Epidural. <laughs> All day. Um, I had the craziest, uh, delivery story with London. Oh um, my gosh. What happened? So in my mind, I had envisioned, I was like, make sure we, you know, we capture this, we get it on camera. I had envisioned like just a beautiful me pushing her out, mm. picking her up. Girl, I was on so many drugs because I had to get uh, an ep I had to get a um when when they I can't even think the word right now epidural I I got an epidural but they put me on pitocin because oh. I had to get I was scheduled because she would she didn't want to come out um so they scheduled me to give birth you know. What is that called? Like, how come I can't even think? They scheduled you to... Oh, um, when they make you go into, into delivery. Yes, yes. Oh, what is that called? Girl, um, they make you go into delivery. Whatever. Y'all know what, what we're talking about. They, they do. They Thank you. you. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> induced. Oh, my God. Our engineer had to tell us. The, the, the one right. man in the room I, I had to tell it. us. I, I got induced. <laughs> yeah, and they put you on Pitocin to, you know, get you contracting and all the things. Well, that Pitocin girl... That was no joke. Yeah, so I was experiencing... Oh, and the worst thing about it is the epidural didn't work. <gasps> so the epidural only numbed my left leg or my right leg. So I kept telling Brian, I'm like, I'm feeling all these contractions. Oh, hell but no. To the umpteenth power because I was on Pitocin. So it was like even worse than a natural yeah. delivery. So 
I was going through it. So they kept giving me, I think like I was on fentanyl at one point. They were giving oh my me God. some like crazy drugs to the point, and I don't do good with any kind of medication or any kind of drugs. <laughs> so as I was about to push London out, I was puking. I, I was like, and they had You're me like pushing room. and throwing up at the same time? Yes, that's how she came out. Who, so who this, wants that birth This story? was not the magical I was thinking the wind was going to be in my hair. <laughs> I was envisioning like, I was like, oh my God, this is how I delivered London. Like pu- like choking on my throw up. Like literally. We got to have these moments that humbled us though. Brian was like, <laughs> she's choking. I was also, because the way you're back, you know how like you're so. Yeah, you're leaning. Leaning back and then your legs are like to you. Girl, it was a hot, I was a hot mess I okay, it was a hot mess. But I didn't really care because obviously we just want them out and yes. then I forgot everything else that happened after that Brian's like you still have puke in your hair I'm like it's fine um, <laughs> but you survived that so it was you like, survived it if you can get through that you're like yeah. I can love myself through anything through anything yes, yes. yes. I love it I, I feel like I that it. that moment of like self-love yeah it took but I like I don't know that's why I saying I don't know how to answer that question because I feel like throughout the years it's like Growing up in this industry, it's like you had to give yourself yeah. some self love because you we had so many doors constantly being slammed sure. on us. And you know this, like the audition sure. world, like you know we have a lot of no's before we get that one yes, and and even then it's still an uphill battle of you know booking things and yeah, and rejection is a muscle it, that you have to like work out, you have to massage and push oh through gosh. regardless. So. Totally. I'm sure, right? Like, so you're a master pusher then. Um, yeah, there whether, you go, it be, there you go. whether it be the baby or, or work. Yes. Oh my <laughs> I God, love I love it. that. You being in the industry then, you experience a lot of no's, a lot of rejection. I think, you know, when we see you on and you are, you know, on television, we don't realize like the struggle that some actresses have to go through first yeah. before they get, you know, the starring role or before, you know, they make that album. We all think that it just happens overnight. So it sounds like you strengthen that rejection muscle. Like you were like, okay, this is a part of the process. It doesn't define me. I know who I am. I just got to keep going. Yeah. I yeah. 100% love that. And I feel like you as um, a brand and influencer, because that's essentially what you are. If I were to talk to... 10 random moms yeah. I feel like they would know your brand right mm-hmm. I feel like all of us at some point have been to your page and seen this um dancer seen this you know awesome wife and mom putting on these fabulous events mm-hmm. for their kids <laughs> oh my god I love it <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I like I reached out to you and I was like okay girl I have a, a birthday party it's his I first know. one I need it to be fabulous tell me what to do <laughs> Yeah. So you were a resource. I don't think that people know also how sweet and helpful you are when it Aww. comes to motherhood and stuff like that. Um, I even remember being at Leanne's and asking you, like, how did you do your snapback so quick? And you were like, girl, no, it took me like a year to oh find my myself again. Yeah. And I think that helped me put things in a realistic perspective yeah. because we don't see the challenges. We only see the glory. Right. Nobody's posting a lot of the hardship. Yeah. And so I think you being 100 with me and telling me, like, don't expect it too yeah. soon. Chill. Because I was being so hard on myself. I was like, OK, well, I feel like we're hard <laughs> on ourselves because <laughs> like we have so much content that we're constantly seeing on the gram. And there's a lot of comparison and there's a lot of, I mean, back in the day, we didn't have access to all that. We didn't know, you know, someone just had a baby and a week later, their stomach's flat. Like, that's crazy. Um, but, <laughs> but that's the case for some women. I'm not, and I'm not knocking that either. Like, to each his own. That just wasn't my journey personally. And I feel like because I've been in dance and fitness and that's been my passion and um, how a lot of people know me, people were even setting me up from when I was pregnant. Like, oh, girl, your snapback game is going to be crazy. Like, Mm. I can't wait to see what you look like after this baby. But that wasn't the case for me. And I was just very um, transparent and, you know, this is this is me with my audience. So I think. Um, you know, everyone, that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about pregnancy is everyone's journey is yeah. so different. And um, again, I embraced all of those challenges and hurdles and things I was going through. Um, but I think the best thing I did for myself was completely took the pressure off and was like, you know what? I'll get to my goal. I will. Um, whatever I say, I'm going to put my mind to. Mm. I always do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why when I saw you, I was like, girl, you just like, 
I mean, you look absolutely amazing, by the way. You look so, mm. so Tell me great. more. We didn't yes. hear you. <laughs> I'm joking. No, Girl, it's been a you struggle. You look so good. <laughs> like, we've known each other for so long, so I know you before babies, and like, you know, I just commend you and you look absolutely thank amazing, you even so. right now I'm like complaining like I've lost so much muscle mass and you're like girl we're gonna get it back yes. like you're you're gonna get we your build, ass back you're gonna get that. yes I'm like okay girl because the, the struggle has been real I think what's hard though is seeing and you're a, you play into this seeing this like perfect life that you are projecting or putting on the ground and maybe life is perfect I want you to share if there are any imperfections, because literally when we go to your platforms, we see, you know, the husband, the wife, the, you know, cute little, perfect little boy and girl. Instagram is the highlight reel. Okay. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. Instagram, the real stuff is on the stories, but <laughs> Instagram is the pretty highlight reel. I think everyone knows that it's glossy and like, it's all of the best moments, but I share a lot on my stories of just more like you know, the realness, the day to day and nobody's life is perfect. And if, if it is, God, God bless you. Um, but <laughs> I feel like it's a struggle. So give girl. us the juice then. What has been the hardest part about marriage? Because when I met you, we were single in the streets. We were dating, right? What's been the hardest part about marriage? Since having the babies or marriage in general, marriage in general, between you and your partner? So Brian and I were almost like high school sweethearts. Um, we went to Cross Rival High School. So he's literally known me since I was like 19, 18, 19 years old. Um, so we already have that history and we've seen each other grow up. And I feel like since he's known me for so long, we have such a strong foundation. That doesn't mean that it's easy all the time, <laughs> you know? I think... You have to make the time and consciously take the time mm -hmm. for your partner. And I feel like especially when kids come into the mix, yeah. life gets super busy. And obviously they become your priority and they become your everything yeah. on, on both sides. So I feel like trying to take that time out and making your partner feel like you know, they are still, they matter. They matter. <laughs> yeah. They matter. And that they are still, uh, the number one priority to you. Uh, yesterday I just surprised Brian with tickets to the Rams game. We've never been to the SoFi stadium. So, um, it was his birthday the week before and everything always gets so crazy around like Thanksgiving yeah. and like his birthday. So, um, yeah, I just like, I love doing little things like that. Um, so we, and then we met one of our friends and he didn't know that they were coming either. And Perfect. so, yeah, it was, it was fun. That's a spicy tip right there. Yeah. Like, just adding little yeah. fun, little surprise dates. Um, Brian and I are big on like touch, like whatever your love language is. Mm -hmm. I think like mine is touch and time. Like I, so like, you know, we are very physical. Yes. And <laughs> put your hands all yes, over me. Yes, put your hands all over me. <laughs> and take me somewhere. Right. Let's go do something. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I feel like that's what keeps like the spice up in the relationship. How know? did you know that Brian was your purpose mate? Um, I feel like from when we like first met, we fell in love that summer like so hard. I was like, okay, he is like my first true love and I've never been able to like shake that off. Even mm. like going, you know, dating in my 20s or whatever, I felt like there was not a love that I had experienced that was like that. Mm. So I always compared everyone to Brian. And I always compared like, how is this guy loving me? And how does Brian love yeah. me? And it never compared. And, and that feeling is just something you cannot, um, you can't replicate that. You know? I'm a huge like proponent though of, us not going back to exes unless they've done the work or changed from the original person that they were when mm -hmm. we were dating them or they've done the healing work to solve for whatever it is or the reason that we broke up. Mm -hmm. How did he circle back into your life and what made you take your ex back? What's weird about Brian and I when we dated back in the day is we didn't really have a reason why we broke up. We were just young and needed to figure out life. Like mm. there was nothing that he did to me or I did to him. Uh, as a matter of fact, I broke his heart. Oh, girl. Yes. I'm spilling the tea. Um, <laughs> he, so he always knew I was going to move out to L.A. And I was in a girl group when I first moved out here. 
and singing, dancing, acting, that was my main focus. Mm -hmm. Um, So he actually moved out here and we were both 19. He was like, You guys are babies. Babies. Broke, just trying to figure out like what the heck we were doing with our life. He was like, I can't afford out of state tuition to go to college. Like, Mm. I got to go back home, got to get my shit together. So we tried to do long distance and I think doing long distance is so hard. But even at like 19, it's just like, what, what is that? Yeah. I, and I felt like too, I was new to LA and I just felt like I didn't want to be in a relationship. I just wanted to like, you know, be free live, and yeah, live date. and, and figure things out. Um, and I did a year of that and realized, fuck, like I had such a good thing with this man mm. and I broke up with him and kind of like ruined that. And I feel like I hurt him and he was kind of like over me at that point he was like no I'm I'm good on you like I don't even <laughs> he's like know, my self-esteem like, is too high to take this from you Melissa yeah like <laughs> I'm, I'm good on you and I would then I was a devastated heartbroken one and the roles flipped and I remember because he was back home in Michigan at the time I would go home obviously to visit my family over the holidays and I wanted to meet up and he just was like no girl like I'm like so that was like a big like standards fellas yes. I love this and he was like no he didn't he could didn't have time for me and then that uh Christmas I was at the gym one night working out and I end up meeting this guy who I then dated for like six years is and that's crazy a, a guy from Michigan and he moved out to LA and then Brian's thinking like, okay, that's it. Like I, I, Mm -hmm. after like a year of us dating, he's like, I lost her. I'm thinking like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to ever be with him. Yeah. And that was kind of like, I guess that was that. And then how we circled back around was just even like, it was just crazy. Like it's like a movie. I I know. It really is. It really is. Like our love story, um, you know, has been, I feel like ongoing like we never really fell out of love with each other so to circle back around to your question yeah like he didn't do anything or I didn't do anything that I don't know that I that I was like oh I could never ever date you mm-hmm. again you know it's like I felt like we were never finished did you have to it's apologize to him? okay <laughs> did you have to apologize to him for like not seeing maybe his value early on and why you should hold on to him? Was there I think ever, like, I was trying to, but again, we were so young. And yeah. like, he was probably heartbroken and was like, I'm done with you. And, you know, then we had to go through, I think it was good for both of us to date and to like, you be with people, let me be with people or be in a relationship to actually value, you know, what we had or then what we could build. Because we had been long distance yep. the whole time we'd known each other. Like, we didn't even know what we were capable of doing yep. as a couple, you know? But, like, I have letters where, like, you know, from the both of us saying, like, I can't wait one day till we have kids until Aww. we're married. And, like, these are, like, you know, love letters. I feel like we always wanted that together and that yeah. dream. We always wanted that. Um, and our dreams came true. So just to, like, tie it on the end – before you guys got married though one of you guys had to hit up the other like okay can we give this another shot yes at some point you know um I wasn't in a relationship he wasn't in a relationship and we had started talking again but Brian was always the guy and I always always say this who's been in my corner like telling me like when making the band came up he's like you should go audition for that Mm. or like you know pussycat dolls he's like you should do that he always stayed in touch but at a like you know yeah and so he I don't himself, know, like, it sounds even, like he like friend zoned himself for a while to like stay in the mix with well, you. Well, we were, yeah, like I feel like once we got over that, like, okay, the hurtful part, uh-huh. we still like kind of kept talking, you know what I'm saying? Where we could get to a level where we were friends. So we never, it wasn't like I never heard from him for like eight years and all of a sudden he came back. Like we had still, I feel like there was, there was hope on both sides. Well, like maybe this could be yeah. down the line, you know? Um, so he had taken a job in Tampa and I feel like that's when we kind of really started talking again and I would go fly to see him and we just kept it really light Mm -hmm. and fun and yeah, it was a perfect time for both of us. And then after like two years of that, I was like, okay, what, what the fuck are we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. And then he moved to LA. He was in a position where he could work from home and he moved to LA and then that year which was so crazy I never thought because we were still trying to figure things out is this now the second time he's moved for you um I guess yeah (laughs) (laughs) I guess 
And then he <laughs> proposed to me that that year. Yeah, which I, I didn't know that was going to happen that, like the year that he moved out to LA. Which, mind you, you had probably one of the most like, public weddings next to the royals if you want to think about it <laughs> because you did a video where you paid like tribute or homage to uh i don't know if it, it was like a performance for him right but it was, it was like a beyonce number yeah and it went viral like it was incredible yeah. i remember just getting the video and everybody sharing it because here's this like fabulous pretty girl you know performing these awesome moves for her dude to mm-hmm. the point I'm like do I need to choreograph something for my <laughs> wedding like what yes. you know I, <laughs> lord knows me and uh, my husband just like freestyled it on the floor we did, there was it. no performance but I feel like that was like another element of you raising the bar right in like Aww. how it, things are executed when you do that is it for self or is it for your fans is it who's it for when you put on these huge performances like that So that was the first time I had done anything like that. So like I obviously grew up dancing. Dancing has been a passion my whole entire life. Brian always loves watching me dance. Mm. So that specific moment was for him. Mm. So that was me thinking about the songs I wanted to dance to for him. Everything was very all for him. You Mm. know, I had no idea it was going to do what it did. And that was the beauty of Instagram and what can happen yeah. when things literally catch like wildfire. Like I, I to this day I'm like, okay, I think it'll it'll be cute for Instagram, but I had no idea it was gonna do what it did. Um back when Instagram was Instagramming. Right. Okay. When you could see posts. Yeah, so. when you could see posts, exactly. <laughs> At the moment that they come in. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll see stuff and I'm like, you know what? I missed the Black Friday sale because I didn't get it till three days later. Right. I didn't see the post. Oh, it's so frustrating. Don't even get me started. But you also performed at your 40th birthday. Oh, yes, yes. So again, you performed. Who yes. was that for so, that time? That was for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was your girl stepping into and embracing I'm 40 and this is a bad bitch moment. Yes. Um, but no, I feel like Taking it back to the wedding, that was a moment for Brian. And, like, we were just so connected. Like, it was mm-hmm. – that was such a beautiful moment. Um, and we'll go down in history in my books. Yes. It was one of the best moments ever. I want, I could relive that day over and it over again. It was so incredible. Like, And I phenomenal. think, like, when, when you watch it, people – I feel like the reason it did what it did is because you could tell. You, you – I watch that and want to cry. Like, I feel what I'm feeling. The what, energy. The energy, yeah. yes. You can tell when people are putting things on and it's about a performance. For me, it wasn't about the performance. It was strictly about him. I love that everyone thought the performance was great because it was, <laughs> but that moment I felt like was so pure and was so um, authentic to to who we are mm-hmm. and just everything about it was was that. Now, my performance for 40, I feel like me throwing a party for my 40th, Mm -hmm. people were expecting something like a performance. (laughs) Like, you know, if they came to that party and I didn't dance, I feel like I would have been letting them down Um, for the friends who like know me as a person. So um, and that was like, okay, well, we we already did the wedding dance and I'm never going to try to top that because, again, that was its own thing. Epic, yeah. And I think for me me turning 40 was also just very scary for so many years I did Mm. not want to share what how old I was with people Mm. um even online it was very like every time I had a birthday I felt like I had to hide from it and I feel like that's just the industry growing up here in LA and I shared this before is like I would walk into rooms with agents managers and tell them my age and I would feel the air being sucked out of the room like oh you're it's a little too late for you. It's like, what do you mean? Like, how did that affect you your could... esteem? Feeling like everything was indicative of. Oh a my number. god! Of course, it was very. It was hard, you know. Then I felt like I always had to lie. Mm-hmm. So then you go into these rooms lying about your age, yeah, which makes you feel even worse. You're like, God, what? Who am I? And so, the year I was turning forty, I said, you know what? F this. Like, I want to own mm. who I am. I authentically want to be myself yeah. and be proud about who I am. And, like, these are all the things I've done in my life. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to hide from it mm. and hide from who I am. And when I finally came out and said, like, okay, this is how old I am, <laughs> that 
I was so scared. And I was like, oh my God, I'm probably going to lose like a million followers and people are going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're... But it was the exact opposite. It was... I had no idea the response I was going to get from so many women mm. who were like, I love that I feel like the things I want in my life yeah. now are achievable because I've seen what you have mm. done later on in your life and you don't have to get married and have kids and buy a house and do all the things yeah. in your 20s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's what we expect. We think that like there's a certain number that we got to hit it by. Right, right. So I feel like because I allowed myself – to be who I am, I was also allowing all the women who follow me mm. and giving them permission for them to be themselves as well. And that was so beautiful. And liberating, I'm and, sure. Oh my God. <laughs> so then at that moment, I was like, this is it. This is the way I, I want to feel. This is how women should feel in general. And also women should know as we get older, it just keeps getting better. You know, it just Say that keeps, again for the people in the back. older... <laughs> It just keeps getting better and because we're wiser and we're more mature and we know who we are and we know the things we want and we know the things we don't want. Yep. And it's all of those things that I just, I don't know, I just felt like, okay, I've, I've arrived. Your girl has arrived. And that's why I was like, when I have a birthday party, like, how do I want to spend my 40th? Yeah. Do I want to go away on a vacation? Do I want to throw a party? I was like, I love to throw parties, yep. let my hair down, dance, have fun. Like, I love that. So I'm like, no, we have to do a party. And it would be so fun to do, like, an empowering performance with my girls. Yep. And be like, I'm fucking 40. I feel like you commemorated <laughs> it the best ever. Um, it was incredible. Just watching you is incredible. Aww. I think um, to today's episode about how to be a badass mama, how do you keep fueling the passions that you love in addition to mothering and wifing because I think that we think that everything has to shut down mm -hmm. it has to become all about the kids everything else fades out or if we do have career and we're juggling we feel guilt or mm -hmm. shame I know I experienced mm -hmm. that um I didn't take maternity leave right after the baby and mm -hmm. I was like oh my god am I jacking my kid up mm -hmm. and hair was crazy it was just it was hard I went through probably like a year of just trying to you know figure myself out and find myself again meanwhile you made it look so good so I'm like oh how do how how did you juggle it all I'm glad it looked that way on the outside <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're saying I made it look so good um so for me I was like I feel like I actually started later on in life and why I always put kids off is I felt like I couldn't have them at the same time. Mm. I felt like I still had so many things I wanted to accomplish and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to start a family because I, then I really am going to have to feel that like yeah. we have to shut the rest of the stuff down and I'm not going to be able to, to do both. And I think I got to a point where I was like, I just there's never going to be a right time. Yeah. So we just have to do this now. And that's what that's going to be. And then you have to find a way, I think, because dance and like performing and all those things are a big part of who I am yeah. and for so long. I've been doing it. I couldn't let those things die because mm. I felt like then slowly Melissa was also dying away inside. Mm, like mm -hmm. I still it doesn't matter how old I am. I'll be 90, honey, still putting on performances just because it's what I love to do. You're just going to incorporate the cane with it. Exactly. <laughs> then it turns into the whole oh, J-Lo moment with a cane, yes. honey. <laughs> um, I think you have to never remember or never lose sight of the things that make you happy. Yeah. Never lose sight of the things that make you happy and always try to find time for those things. So I think that's what I, you know, always try to do. And I think – it's so empowering and it's so cool when your kids see you in your prime doing the things that make you happy mm. and doing the things that you love. Yep. They light up. They love. And it's also giving them permission to know like, oh my God, I could actually do that one day. Yep. You know, it's like they're following having your, your son watching you interview people or do radio talks or do your podcast. You are in your element. Yep. I've known this, this about you. This is true. You have natural uh, natural ability to turn on to to do what you do <laughs> to be the spicy naughty that you are because yes. no one can can do what you do Facts. like you do it. Facts and vice versa. I feel like you know everyone can have the same recipe and we are in 
the the space, especially in this industry, yeah. where we're friends with a lot of people who do the exact same thing, mm-hmm. but they'll never be able to bake the cake like you, honey. You know, <laughs> it's like because we're all individuals, yes, in our own right? Yes. Bringing our own secret sauce, yes, for sure. I one hundred percent agree with but that. Keep you got to keep doing the things that feed your soul, that make you happy, so that you can also be the badass mama you know that that part that we're supposed to be that part so I love that you bring up badass mama I already prior to the baby had poor time management <laughs> mm-hmm. work always a priority um then when I got married it was like okay how do I juggle both these things I was capable of doing it then having to master being so selfless um and not putting everything first because somebody is like 100 percent dependent on me Mm -hmm. I think was extremely challenging and naturally being someone who's like okay I gotta pour into my love cup I I need to take this time for myself I always made sure that I prioritized self no matter what it was in the marriage um career I'd always take time but when the baby came I felt like not enough time in the day I felt like okay I'm exhausted so even if I do wrap and get him down early even though I might have a few hours I just want to rest I'm exhausted I know how, how, how do you find enough time and get the energy? <sighs> what is your secret? I don't think I have a secret. I think I just turn it on and you find the time. My mom has more energy than I do. My mom is <laughs> 65 years old and she runs circles around all of us. I'm like, give no. me some vitamins. No. Give me some. Well, that too. Obviously, you know, I'm big into wellness and my supplements and the things I take because I really truly believe what you put in your body you know, has a big effect of how we look, how we live our lives. Um, I'm not a big drinker, never been um, working out and getting my workout in. Mm -hmm. I'll notice a huge difference. It gives me more energy when I feel like I'm making time to move my body. For sure. um, Than just being like, sometimes actually when I'm exhausted, I'm like, let me just go to the gym so I can you know rev back up rally up yes you know you sound like really, me though that really does help but trust me there are times when I'm like babe we are ordering Chick-fil-a tonight <laughs> I am exhausted I've had a day with the kids I've had a day with work I I need to pause and I feel like that is fine we can give ourselves grace and we can have those moments yeah. but I think prioritizing making a schedule and being disciplined to a schedule is where we all win. Okay. Where we all win. So I can give this advice, right? When it comes to relationship, I can tell you how to make time in your day for relationship. When it comes time to um, some goals that I have, those have been falling on the back burner. So it's so crazy. Personal goals for yourself. Personal goals for self, right? Okay. In my career. Um, so for instance, uh, I've been working on my book and haven't finished it yet. And so now I'm using the excuse of there's not enough time in the day. And when people tell me that for relationship and dating, I'm like, oh, heck no, you have this goal. We need to at least carve out an hour. We need to at least make sure. And then here I am now, I'm, I'm being a hypocrite and I'm like, I don't got time to write my book. I can't, uh, I'm so exhausted. Um, make moves. <laughs> From what I can see is a planner, right? Yes. Tell me how make moves could help me finish my freaking book and get done with it like how can I get this out what would what would I use make moves for so this whole thing started when obviously I've always been a planner junkie I I will buy multiple planners all of the planners I have like a sick obsession with planners and even my husband's like girl you do not need one more do we use all the planners like sometimes not all of them (laughs) but like you will start with one, then I'll find another one that I like. And I'm like, no, this one's better. So I kind of became like this like planner connoisseur. And then I always had this goal of like mm. one day I'm going to design my own planner mm. and it's going to have all the things that I would want it to have. And so this kind of came as a, a selfish need and want. Mm. It turned into this can help a lot of other women and people Um, you know, to make the moves in their life that they want to make. And so I always felt like there was a huge disconnect where like at the top of the year, we're creating our vision board. I love vision boards. I love seeing, writing things down. I love all of that. Yeah. Um, Just to, you know, set the tone at the top of the year. Like what do I want to accomplish? What are the dreams, goals, desires, everything I have? I want it to all be in one spot one place so this allows you to take 
do like a huge brain dump <laughs> of everything that you want and then how to make the moves to make it happen. Mm. So there's also pages in there where you start off the year and then you'll have your monthly moves to make, then you'll have your weekly moves to make, and Ooh. then you have a day to day. So it breaks it down so easily and monthly moves. Yeah. I'm also crazy about aesthetic and design and I can't have something when I open it up feel too overwhelming or like just too much, you yeah. know? So you'll see. It's it came out so beautiful. It's super I worked clean. so hard with my team developing this and it was an uphill battle to get Oh, you it. even have fitness in here. Yes. You like have no prep, meal everything. Prep meal prep and set sweat and your schedule. Sweat schedule, yeah, for when you're working out. So I have no excuse to like <laughs> yeah, yeah. not eat clean and just, work out yeah. and accomplish my goal. Yeah, it's just all all there. I love this. So I would use this. Okay, if, if I want to finish my book, the book is the goal. Mm -hmm. I would write so that down in here mm -hmm. and then go through a time schedule of like when you're going to actually sit down and do it okay when you're going to give that to to your to yourself and find the time to do that because like you said you you know exactly what you need your people to do for the relationships you know exactly what to tell them but now I think it's hard for you to step out of that and make the time for yourself because and that's what it is I'm not pouring into self as much as I usually would and well you're pouring into a lot of other things so <sighs> yes that part balance. Okay, so this will help me with time management, which yes. I'm horrible at, and the balance. And really, like, seeing it out. So, like, if you look in the planner, if, like, you put down, like, finish book, it actually, there's a, a page where you'll see a monthly, like, moves to make. Mm -hmm, I see monthly. And you're going to see, like, okay, like, is – is it going to be in January, February, and March that I'm going to give myself those three mm. months to get this book done? Like, we all need accountability, and I feel like that's what this is going to do. I feel like a lot of people, either they'll start with a the planner, yep. they don't always stick with it, but that's where the discipline comes in. Like, And it's for all, uh, uh, the entire year. Yes, the yeah. entire year. This is 2023. And we sold out, and now we are having one more drop um so oh this is so cute it even has like a little stickers, little stickers. oh I my know. gosh this is adorable thank you and thank it, you. it this totally is on brand for you like it's so clean it's so fresh thank you babe. it looks amazing where did where does the inspo come from uh for your type of style I feel like your style is uh modern clean but also timeless love that that's exactly what it is <laughs> I got it right oh yeah that's exactly what it is um you know, I for this, I worked with one of my amazing graphic designers and we she knows me very well too, so I feel like when you can partner up with people who really get you, yeah. I feel like it's really easy for that to to come through and convey, but you pretty much just anyone who knows me kind of knows that Yes. That's kind of it right there. This is phenomenal. So, And this is yours, by the way. This is for me. Yes. yes. <laughs> like the Oprah show. This is a spicy this Oprah is, show. Yeah, you get to make you. moves. Yes. <laughs> it's for you. Thank you. I know. I seriously need this because I'm, I'm, I'm procrastinating. I know that this needs to get out into the world. Yes, because I you know. need to share your knowledge and all the greatness and all the tips. And it's going to change so many lives. So you need to finish it. And you need to maybe have that be your why. Yeah. I think that's like a, lot of, a lot of times <laughs> we'll have a goal, right, that we want. But we don't all, we don't always associate the why. Yeah. Like why do does this need to happen? Why am I yep. doing this to help millions yeah. of couples? Someone's missing out on love because yes. I haven't put out this ring and book. So yes. you're right. I do need to. Um, Can I write? Is there space to write that there down is, in here? No, there's <laughs> All the I gotta put my why. Why? Yes. <laughs> I gotta put my why because like nine o'clock will come. I like I have a calendar notification on my phone to tell mm -hmm. me like go write, and then I'm like, ooh, I could write or finish this Netflix, uh, you know, series, and yeah. I will just I will just relax. And I know that's not what I should be doing, and so I need to take my own freaking advice and your life. advice. But what she's saying is real life because we all have those moments and we all do that it's like okay I have an hour right now yeah am I gonna write am I gonna go to the gym I'm about to do something for the kid like there's so many we're being pulled in so many different directions yeah so I feel like when you carve out the time and specifically map it out then you're gonna be like okay I can dedicate even if it's 30 minutes of put your phone away let's focus and zero in yeah I'm pen to paper and I'm going 
Oh, that's what I need. Okay, pray for me. I'm gonna do. Girl, I'm, I'm to call I'm you make tomorrow. Some moves. Your ass is not writing. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, are you writing? And I only have one kid, right? So I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I seriously don't think I could do another. You have two. So if you were able to get your vision and bring it to life, I'm like, okay, you can. I, I can do this. Yes. So everyone can do it. Tell me a little bit about um, motherhood and like what has been um, the biggest learning lesson for you, or has made made you grown and evolve the most since motherhood I feel like you get to a place where obviously it's your priority your kids are your priority and you're seeing things for the first time again yeah. it's happening very fast though I will say this time and and there's in the beginning we kind of feel like it's never gonna are we ever gonna get out of this cycle because it's very hard in the beginning having a newborn if you're breastfeeding, dealing, you're up all hours of the night, all of that. Uh, Brian calls that the Navy SEAL training. Because um, <laughs> that is Feels no about joke. right. Feels about right. Um, but you always have to remember it's stages. They're small mm. little stages. So I feel like sometimes when we're in the thick of it, we're like, oh, is there light at the end of the yeah. tunnel? It's going to pass. And it just keeps getting better. And now what I'm going through is like, it's I don't even feel like I have toddlers now I feel like they're little people like oh. the the it has gone by so fast and the older they get the more I was just telling you it's, yeah. it's flying it I'm is like, it's seriously so it's flying. like I want to cherish these moments moments yes um I've learned also like not to care so much about like all the other shit in your life that maybe before you uh before I didn't have kids would really bother me but because it's those mundane things are not my focus and I'm trying to be so present in the here and the now mm. with them that I don't allow those things to affect me. And that has taken a, a big burden, I feel like, mm. off of, you know, all all the unnecessary stuff. How that, are you blocking that, out that, that noise, come, though? comes up. Um, I'm so busy with the kids, and I really focus, focus on that. And I also have learned, like, I feel like motherhood is all about transitions. Mm. It's about transitions with your partner, about transitions with your friends. And you're constantly having to not reinvent yourself, but in a way, you're like, you're constantly changing, yeah. you know, like small little like moments, like your kids are changing, yeah. you're changing. And the friends who maybe once we're there and that are not there, like your real friends are going to be there yeah, regardless, sure. you know? So it does sometimes make me sad or I'm like, man, I have to be so close to, to such and such. And they're not even in my life. Yeah. They're not even invested in my life. They're not even invested in like my kids or what I'm doing. Like, why do I care about that person? Why? Because we had a history together back in the day. And I'm just trying to like, you know, reminisce about that. But like, I learned like, no, like just because we've known each other for a long time, like I could have a connection with someone who I just met like a year ago yeah. and that'd be so much more stronger. And the value of that person is just so much better in our lives because it's like, I feel like they're invested and we're invested. And I don't know. I feel like. Make the investments. It sounds like if the person's not investing in you, you're not investing in them. Yes. Yes. And because you have you don't have a lot of time being a mother, as you oh, know this. Yes. You have to be so picky and choosy about where you spend your time, who you spend your time yeah, with. Yeah, I'm like, if it's not on my calendar, yes, uh, or, if I don't get an invite. Where, <laughs> where you're giving your energy. Yeah. Your energy is so important. Like, so important. It affects everything. For it sure. It the whole dynamic of the house. For so sure. So I always say, like, um, you know, I feel like through motherhood, I've, there's been a lot of transition, and I've learned so much about who I am, who a lot of people are to me, my friends, mm. family, whatever. And, you know, I'm just really investing, like you said, in the people who are, are there for you and care about your well-being. And all of that stuff goes hand in hand. I love it. I love it. Um, I know you have to get back to motherhood. Yes. So I want you to let everybody know where they can get the planner. Where can they um, register for your classes? Like you oh, teach yes. an amazing like workout booty class. Yes. Um, and I need to firm these muscles up. Like tell us everywhere that we can go and what we can get. So obviously Instagram is you can find me at Melissa Molinero. Um, the website is movebymelissa.com and there you will find all the products I sell, cute workout sets, my waist trainer, um, classes, the power booty classes, um, 
I would love to go on tour this next coming year. Ooh, so that's a big goal of mine. We're writing it so, in the make moves. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's a lot to, to put that on. I did it once um, after I had London and I'm like, no, I really want to get back out there because we had like whole pandemic and it was just so hard. I like know. things shifted and changed so much. So now I feel like everyone's ready to like, you know, yes. attend events and get back out there. Top of the year. Um, this is the perfect time too. Yeah. And the, the Make Moves Planner is also on movebymelissa.com. What else? I love it. Yeah. I'm like, you got a lot going on. I'm like, I need that waist trainer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so make sure you guys uh, give Melissa stuff. I've this, this, I'm definitely going to start using this. I needed um, a planner anyway. So this is perfect because I need it in here and on my iPhone. Like I need it in both places. But yes. when you put you pen to paper, it yeah, it makes such a huge Especially difference. Goals and for sure. When it comes have. to manifesting, for sure. I'm a firm believer of that. Uh, you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at spicy Mari. Go to the spicy uh, click and subscribe to the show, share it with a friend. Also, you guys can join my six week course, your purpose made awaits and get you love for 2023. Once again, that's on the spicy you guys. And, uh, if you're watching this episode, use offer code, uh, get spicy 500 and you will save 500 on the class, but let me help you find love and discover your purpose mate. And, um, this is going to help you be a badass mama. There you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The spicy.